Hi, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and in this episode of Winter Sewing 101, I'm going to put all the pieces together for you. I'm going to show you how to assemble your jugs with your seeds and your soil and tape up and where I store it outside. So if you're curious about what winter sewing is or you want to know kind of how we got to this stage, check out the other videos in this series. All right, so let's get going. So I said that one of the materials you'll need is a big bucket for putting your soil in and from wastening it. So I've got a jar of water here that I hope will be enough. And I've got my bag of soil. And uh, you can check, uh, this is, this is I think, the sixth or seventh episode in the series. So you can look back to see when I explain what materials you'll need, what winter sewing is, all of that. I should have a link somewhere around this time, up in the corner over here, that explains how you can find that. Now, I one thing I didn't mention when I mentioned getting the materials is you'll need more than a small bag like this. But I bought a small bag of this because one, it's easier to handle <laughs> for a video. Um, and two, because I hope to get better quality soil after this. But for showing an example of how to assemble it, this will work fine. All right, so I'm going to dump the soil in. All right, so your first step is get your bucket, put some soil in it. I'm doing a small amount because I'm only going to be doing uh, enough to kind of show you how the process works. I plan on winter sowing most of my jugs actually at the end of January um, because of the zone I'm in. And if you want to know more about that, check in the series where I talk about when to winter sow. But I have a thing of water. I'm going to put it in a mix. And the trick is you don't want your soil to be soaking wet. You want it to be damp. And it's a thin line between the two. Whoops, I'm not tipping the table on which I'm doing it. Maybe I'll do it on my lap. <laughs> so I'm just stirring around. You can use a stick, you can use your hand. You just wanna make sure that the whole thing is mixed well. I'm gonna put in the rest of this jar. I think I might need a little more than that. Okay, it feels sufficiently damp. So I squeeze it and maybe a little bit, maybe I can get a drop of water out of it, but not enough for it to pour out. All right, so your next step is to fill your jug with soil now that you've had it moistened. And I like to just use a mug that I have on hand. And just plop that right in there. It can get more than my hands themselves can get. Now, something I haven't had a problem with, but a lot of people will warn, is you don't want to get this stuff in your lungs. So you can moisten it outside, or um, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of it, you probably should moisten it in a place that's well ventilated. I like to pack it down a little bit, but you don't need to do a whole lot. I just kind of like to know how it's gonna fit in here. I could take it up to the edge, but I kind of ha like having a little space um, between where I tape, otherwise, you know, it's a little harder to tape it down if the soil's right at the level where you're putting the tape in. But I don't think it's a huge deal either way. All right, so the next thing is to get my seeds. I'm going to do Nero de Toscano kale seeds. These did really well for me last year. Should have cleaned the table before I went to do this, huh? And they just, they actually performed all throughout the spring, summer, and even into the fall. Um, and so I'm just gonna pour a few. They're small seeds. So I'm just gonna pour a few in this in this thing just so I'm not handling all, getting all the seeds wet. Because the important thing of like maintaining seeds is keeping them dry. And now I'm gonna think, where do I want these? So one of the lessons I learned last year is to put one seed per hole but you can put the holes relatively close together as if you're planting two in one space. The main reason is it's just easier to separate them. So in theory, I wanna do like one in each corner. And I know from experience last year that right underneath where the handle of the jug is, the seedlings tend not to grow very much right here. So that's right here. So I'm going to 
do, I'm gonna poke a hole here on this corner, here, just for my own planning purposes, here, and one in the middle. I really only need um, like three viable kale plants, maybe four this year. And then I'm actually going to, since I'm doing a second seed next to it, I'm actually gonna do a second set. And there we go, all right. Ideally, now see these seeds I bought in 2019, and so I'm not as sure about how um, they're going to propagate, which is one reason I'm doing more than one. So you don't want it to be very deep. These are tiny seeds, so I just plop a seed in each hole. In fact, I probably made the holes too deep here. I'd say even with a seed this small, you could probably get away with just putting it on top of the soil. All right, now that I've done that, I'm just going to use my finger to cover over the spot a little bit. And another thing you can do is you can put another thin layer of soil on top of that if you want. Some people do. I do a very, very thin layer because you don't need the seeds to be super um, far down. Okay. And I will put these back in the seed container later. All right, the next step is to do my labels. Now, because I'm using paint markers, I really don't wanna risk getting paint on my tablecloth. So <laughs> I'm going to do it on a plastic thing. Now, normally I wouldn't actually, I would use a, have something else. So this is well shaken, so these are kale. And I like to write the label on both sides of the contain on both sides because then when I'm looking from the outside, I can actually see the label as well. So I'm just going to do kale, dry, dry, dry. Because I'm only doing one kind of kale, I don't really need to say when. I also sometimes like to put the date that I did it. But I think I'm only gonna do that on the outside of the jug. And the reason being is when I go to transplant this to the garden, I don't be like, did I put it in the garden on that date? No, it's when I did this part of it. So I'm gonna put it in a part of the jug where if I look in, I can see it pretty easy. So maybe on like the far corner, like that, far corner of the jug. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our label on the inside. Now, oh, I need to find my water bottle. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. So get the water bottle, my spray bottle out. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit to have that. No, that's too tight of a stream. Yeah, so you want just like a mist. Whoops. And you just wanna make sure there's a generous layer of moisture on the top, kind of like you would do for your garden you know, when you plant seeds. Okay. So then the seeds are in there, the label's on. You can put the jug, the duct tape on the jug. And for this, I'm gonna use pretty blue duct tape. I don't know, you can use any color. At one point I'd been using one color for a set I did in February, another color for stuff I did in March, but I don't think it matters a huge amount. Um, one little trick when taping your jugs is you may not have cut perfectly evenly and also you, if you're like me you'll end up messing up the tape so I like I just did so I like to do it in relatively small strips you got to make sure that you didn't get moisture on it and I like to have the tape be more of it on below the below the line because you want to get as much sunlight as you can into the jug in the spring. I can do a bigger piece this time if I try it right. All right, let's go brave and do a bigger piece. There we go. You want to make sure it overlaps. And it's okay if there's like little bits of that stuff. You just push it in, make sure it's well on both sides of the jug. I 
we can do the rest in one strip. Yeah. There we go. I feel so weak when I'm just trying to do tape. And it's okay if they overlap, you know, it's totally fine. All right, so we have it all taped up. And then you have the choice of a couple different places to put your label. One, you can do, you can write it up here where you can see it easily if you have, we're gonna have jugs packed together. You can write it down here on the label, which I found it tends to last longer on the label and also you don't have to worry about um, reusing it the following year. And some people even write it on the bottom on duct tape. I like to write it, I like to write it on the label. So I'm doing kale, kale, and then I'm doing, well, what's today's date? Oh, <laughs> New Year's Eve, December 31, 20, all right. So now when I go out, I can either look in my jug, well, I'll, I'll show you a photo of that later, um, or I can look on the jug and know. I also am going to write this in my journal as soon as I'm done with this video, just to mark what I did create. And basically you're done. Just take this guy outside. So let's go do that. All right, so I like to keep my jugs on my little mini deck. It has good drainage, um, and eventually I'm going to put either bricks or, um, you know, I have piece, big pieces of wood that I can put to keep them from being tipped over in the rain and snow and such. But yeah, you could, you could put them in the grass directly, and it really doesn't matter whether they get sun at this stage. They're going to sit here and germinate when they feel like germinating, but once they're starting to grow, you do want to make sure they get some sun just like you would want to make sure for seedlings indoors have plenty of sunlight. Also real quick, I wanted to show you when you look in the container, you can see the kale label. So if the one outside fades away, where is she? The one outside fades away, <laughs> it's like, has it faded already? Then you can look inside the jug. And I just realized there's a little gap here between the tape and the container. So I'm going to come back and cut a little bit and add a little more tape to make sure there's not a gap. Before I go, I'm going to give you a couple more tips that I forgot to mention or might be useful to you when doing your jugs. One is you don't need to plant the seeds super deep. Like often they say like plant the seeds twice as deep as they are tall or wide. You can do that. But with the winter sowing process, you don't need to necessarily have them super deep. And in fact, sometimes they do better being a little more on the shallow side. But if they need a little bit of soil, definitely make sure there's a little bit on top of them. Some seeds do require direct sunlight for germination. In that case, you would just do what the directions say. The other thing that I will mention is when you're putting your containers outside, make sure that let's say you decide you want to put them in a crate or in a bucket or something to, to make to keep them all together. Make sure that if you put them in any kind of container, the jugs, if you put them in any kind of collective like bucket, container, crate, anything like that, that it has drainage. Otherwise you'll come outside and your <laughs> jugs will be floating in a, back, in a basket of water. And it's happened to just about everybody who winter sows. Um, in fact, I think even me knowing that rule, I ended up doing it accidentally one time because I didn't think it was gonna rain and I had set it outside to put in the right place later and I came out and they were floating in the big ice ice bucket. So that's another tip. Then I will say, you know, don't freak out about how many seeds to put in each jug. You probably want a little bit of space between them is the main thing on a gallon container or something this size. You can do between like four and six seeds. You can also do something called hunk of seedlings um, or hunk of seeds process where you just basically pour the seeds in and then later on you just cut up the pieces like you would cut up bread <laughs> or, or brownies, right? And then just plant the hunk of seeds and let mother nature decide which uh, seedlings should survive. I haven't tried that process before, but I'm probably going to try it with some herbs this year just to see for fun how it goes because with herbs you get so many seeds it doesn't cost much to, to test that out. Um, and I think that just about covers everything. If I missed any areas or if you have any questions about this process, 
please feel free to ask. Um, oh yeah, I was going to say, like, for something like this, you can probably do, think about it like one, two, three, four. You could probably fit four in here. Maybe one in the middle, five if you really want to press it. Or you could do that hunk of seedlings thing. All right, so like I said, if you have any questions, please do ask. If there's any videos you'd like to see about this process that I haven't touched on, also please let me know. I have a few other planned after this, but I think I've gone through the most basic steps at this stage. And then also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And since I'm going to continue writing or producing more of this kind of content, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. Happy New Year!